Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. Before we start, always, always remember to please hit that share button so we can continue to educate more and more patriots like you. Today we start in Ohio, where an area school board president is in major trouble after admitting to driving two hours to meet an ele- what he thought was going to be an 11-year-old girl he had been exchanging inappropriate conversations with. Uh, school boards, man, they're in, the ru- they're in the news about so many creepy things. I guess it's that time of the year. I mean, when you got a school board, you're in charge of a school board and you're talking about how you're going to change the curriculum and you're going to have all these open sexual conversations and you're going to make sure these kids are getting pleasure-based education and blah, 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 blah. Are we surprised when geriatric 60-year-old men start striking up creepy conversations with little girls across state lines and uh, cross to meet them apparently for sex? It's just a mess. All right. So this is specifically to John Gray, who is now actually in ex-president of the Goshen or Goshen, I'm not sure how you say it, local school board in, is it Goshen or Goshen, Ohio. So what happened was he was communicating, or what he thought communicating with the 11-year-old girl, and he decided, I'm going to drive all the way across state lines to meet up with said 11-year-old girl. And instead of finding 11-year-old girl, he found uh, the two, two different groups, members of two different groups. They are called the PCI, the Predator Catchers Indianapolis, and then the PCM, the Predator Catchers Muncie. And so uh, he actually engaged in a, or like an hour-long conversation with members of these groups. And here's just a little bit of the footage. If you're, you've got somebody that you're attracted to, because you called her pretty, correct? I, I said, she's right? a pretty girl. She's a very I gorgeous. tried to make sure yeah, she gorgeous. understood that. I said, so, your mother must be very pretty, too. Yeah. You know what, I man? Oh, I was trying to help you, her, right? You. So, feel good. so explain this. So if you're, you're laying with an attractive girl, she's down to a bra and her panties, you guys are cuddling or making out, and you're touching her all over her body and her butt, how are you going to stop for going any further? Well... Just for you me. You personally, you, yeah, yeah, you. Well, I can't get an erection, so okay. I don't have that problem. Okay. So. Oh, okay. So you know, I it, it's it's okay. Like she can just strip down, and I can just like lay with an eleven-year-old girl. But I, I can't get an erection. So I mean, it's that's totally okay then. Yeah. The implication is all non-erection kinds of sex are legitimate. Uh, at one point, he's trying to, it's really hard to talk himself out of this. At one, said he, at one point, he says, I told her, you're a minor, he insisted. We're not doing any sexual relations. He also added that such interaction would be impossible, as we just saw, due to his purported impotence. Elsewhere in the video, Gray said he remarked on the beauty of the per- person to believe the child. I said, you have beautiful lips, he recalled. She said something about trying clothes on modeling like a fashion show. One volunteer pointed out that Gray also asked the person he believed to be a minor to strip down to her underclothes. I did say that, Gray replied, and admitted that he told her he wanted to wash her in a bubble bath and give her a massage. Yeah. And then he said about how she's starving for something. The 11-year-old girl is clearly the one starving for something. Now, John Gray, on the other hand, I mean, he's just there to try and help her because she's very pretty, as you heard him now, say. There is no 12-year-old girl starving, year old. starving yeah, for yeah, There is none. But in but his mind, in his in mind, his the fact that this actual 12-year-old girl would be reaching out to him and engaging in these conversations meant that she was d- deficient of something, and he... He was going to supply it. Well, sans erection, apparently. Yes, and of course, we get the school district's response. Um, This is from the superintendent, Daryl Edwards. He said that the content of the video is deeply disturbing to our entire school district and uh, the local school community. And to be clear, you know, the incident occurred outside of obviously the school district and that the district leaders are going to be consulting with legal counsel should and should more information become available. They are going to communicate it to their families immediately. Here's the question of whether or not 
this guy will face charges. Uh, Jason Philibaum, who's a former prosecutor, told the local news that this type of video may make a prosecution more difficult as defense attorneys could argue that the man here, John Gray, was subjected to entrapment by a third party group unaffiliated with law enforcement. Again, this was these two outside groups who were just basically taking it on their own to try and catch these predators um, in the act or attempting to be in the act. And it's not actually with the law enforcement. So that makes it a little bit more difficult whether or not they're going to charge him or not. With all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. In the last story, the police weren't necessarily involved right away, but in this story, the police were definitely involved. And we have the Thought Police also there, too. I mean, we have real law enforcement and the Thought Police. They're all there. Uh, it's in Florida. We have a Florida mom who was kicked out of a school board meeting because, you know, she, she, she was about... Uh, she, she almost... Because at the last meeting, Shirley Brown was caught on the microphone Stop talking about talking balls. about school board Her members. Exact you're, you're, words. Done. you're done. You're done, Mrs. Bicondi. You're done. Thank you. You're done. You cannot go and and expound and on school board members. I've told you. I've warned you several times. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're done. Move on. You were about to say something horrible. That Shirley Brown. Please leave. That was Melissa Bacondi, who is a mother of four, and as you saw, she was almost about to maybe say something, and, you know, she's done. She's been warned. So she's done. And then you had a police officer stand right in front of her, and then later on, you actually have two more police officers who will come and stand on either side of her. Now, she was called out uh, she, by name. Uh, she was going to call out by name a Sarasota County School Board member, and, and obviously that means you... You can't. Um, but she had said that at the last meeting, Shirley Brown was caught on the microphone talking about boop, and then that's when cha that was cha uh, Chairwoman Jane Goodwin, who was the one who cut her off. So it's like, it was, she had, I was about to actually say what happened, and then you just, eh, no. Uh, so that's when the cops showed up, and then a couple more of the cops showed up, and then basically Bacondi was like, well, what's, what's the problem? Why can't I, why can't I speak? And it, it literally was. You were about to say something horrible about Shirley Brown. Well, Please you were about leave. to say something. You were about I, to. I felt was horrible, right? And so what you have now is preemptive, preemptive police interaction for what you might have said. Oh, boy, we're moving in the right direction in this country, aren't we, with this new Ministry of Information? Maybe that's the answer to the problem of this new Tsarina and her mission. Maybe we just assume, in all instances, we know what someone's going to say, and then just shut them down entirely, especially if they have a, ha a habit of saying honest or direct things. And what's so interesting is later in the clip then, which we're, we didn't show, uh, good one, the one who said, you know, you're done, actually followed up with, do you have children in our school district? Do you have children in our school district? Do you have children in our point school district? Point of order, that is not appropriate. It is. No way is that appropriate. You don't get to ask people who come to a public meeting whether they have children or not, period. You're, I mean, way Thank out of line. Thank you lot. very much. She's a piece. Thank you very much. Please leave. You should please leave. Ask her to leave. That's, that's what these school boards are doing. And that's actually in Florida, Sarasota, Florida. But, you know, Florida's supposed to be a pretty common sense, a little bit more so. Yeah, but when, um, but when you're talking about school boards, uh, yes. yeah, that's except, the difference. Except because the actual parents who live in, in Sarasota County actually care and have some of that common sense still, they were like, excuse me, Sarasota County, why are the three police officers standing around this woman? So they actually had to have the sheriff from Sarasota issue a statement on behalf of the county police department. Here you go. I'm Sarasota County Sheriff Kurt Hoffman. On April 19th, during the public input section of a Sarasota County School Board meeting, a parent 
attempted to exercise her First Amendment rights and make a public comment. The chairwoman of the school board cut the parent off and she was surrounded by three police officers of the Sarasota County Schools Police Department. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office would never participate in preventing a citizen from expressing their First Amendment rights during public comment. As your sheriff, I do not condone taxpaying citizens being silenced. And it's interesting because he just became sheriff in uh, 2021, but he's been a prosecutor and been in the community for over 30 years, and so he knows what the laws are. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on all items at MyPillow.com when you use the code Dr. Duke. That's D-R-D-U-K-E. Support this show by supporting a great American company. Well, we said the thought police are apparently down in Florida, but we also have Gestapo out there, and they're in New York City, and they're looking for your papers. And if you forge your papers, you're going to get caught. Apparently, we found out that in New York City, they have had dozens of teachers who have been placed on unpaid leave because it was found out that they had fake coronavirus vaccine cards. Because if you know anything about New York City and how woke they are, they're so woke that everyone has to have a vaccine card to prove that they got a couple jabs in their arms to do something. And uh, if they don't have the jab, then they had to basically quit their profession and beg for money on the street or just it's New York City, so you can just go into your Walgreens and steal everything. That's what they're doing in New York City. Well, the Department of Education had reported that uh, fewer than 100 employees, though, had submitted these fake vaccination cards because all the rest of them apparently did go and get the vaccine so they could keep their jobs. And it was estimated, a union official had estimated about 70 employees were impacted, and then it became 82 People, we're not quite sure. It's fewer than 100 and more than 70. Somewhere in that range, uh, we, have, we know that this has impacted the number of teachers. And so spokesperson Nathaniel Steyer had said that fraudulent vaccination cards are not only illegal, they also undermine the best line of protection our schools have against COVID-19. And that statement right there yeah. tells you all about it. That a vaccination card apparently has legality to it, legal or illegal, and that that card is the best line of protection our schools have against COVID-19. Yeah. This little piece of paper or this card, that's, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Now, he also said that universal adult uh, vaccination is, is the reason on that card. But he says, we immediately moved to put these employees, fewer than 100, on leave without pay. There are people, teachers, having sexual relations with your children who still get put on leave and get paid. New York City, you don't take a jab because you, for whatever reason, don't want to, and you get put on unpaid. Leave. It's even better than that. You have 72, 82 P teachers who are desperate to get back in the classroom and teach. And those are the ones that are getting punished, while the ones who stay home can't be bothered delivering a crappy online experience, a half-assed one. And they're the real heroes of the pandemic in New York City. And the uh, United Federation of Teachers, which is the union representing the educators in the city. Brandy Weingarten. Mm, well, she's of the, the big, yeah, yeah. Is she's prepare, or the, the union is preparing to challenge the move. They're going to challenge the move. Uh, saying that some teachers claim they were wrongly accused and placing them on unpaid leave violates the basic notion of due process. So this is a twist from what you would think. You would think the teachers union would be like all about the vaccinated only, but at least the union's going to try to come to the defense of the unvaccinated teachers. We'll see here. Beth A. Norton, who's general counsel for the UFT, wrote a letter to New York City and said, New York City, it is wholly improper for the Department of Education to unilaterally remove UFT members from the payroll based on mere conjecture that vaccination documentation is fraudulent. The UFT demands that the DOE immediately rescind the aforementioned notices and confirmed by the close of business, and this was last week, April 22nd, that the affected UFT bargaining unit members will remain on the payroll until this last week and thereafter. And should the DOE fail to comply with this demand and the due process procedure, the UFT is prepared to initiate a litigation to challenge the DOE's improper actions. So you have a teacher union 
coming to the defense of the teachers for something that's actually worth the union being there for, like actual working conditions. Uh, but per usual, it's ultimately the union's going to be not really caring about what the kids are going to be, how they're going to be impacted. But at least they're going to take to litigation for it. And we also have a related story, right, about more, most Americans have been infected with COVID-19, even if they don't know it, a new CDC study finds. Color us both shocked. A new study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says most people have been infected with COVID-19. According to the data, nearly 60% of adults and about 75% of children have coronavirus antibodies, indicating that they have been affected with COVID-19 and its variants. So again, you ask yourselves, all this arresting of teachers and punishing of teachers, uh, all this craziness around this, uh, doesn't make a, still, the, the lunacy, we'll be 10 years down the road and there will still be lingering things we're not allowed to do because of COVID. And what's fascinating with this, when you say that 60% of adults and 75% of kids have the antibodies for coronavirus, and this is coming from blood samples that were collected across the entire country, it's a significant number because it's a huge rise from just December of 2021. So we're only about five months ago. And at that, that time, there was just about 34% of Americans had any antibodies. So 34 up to 60% of the adults, 75% of the kids, that's a huge jump. And that's, everyone should be like, Woo, this is a good thing. But I mean, that goes against some people's narratives, wish to remain in lockdown forever and for always. And as the report says, as of February 2022, approximately 75% of children and adolescents had serologic evidence of previous infection with SARS-CoV-2 and uh, with approximately one third becoming newly seropositive since December 2021. So we're growing, like we're getting through it. And that's that whole thing of like herd immunity, which we had talked about way long ago by this guy, I think his name, Anthony, Tony, Anthony. Fauci, that's his name, Fauci, Anthony Fauci, I remember that, okay, once upon a time, he came out in front of a camera, he doesn't do that too often, but he came out in front of a camera and said that we need this, like, herd immunity, and we're hoping to get to it, and we need about 60 to 70 percent, okay, I think we're in the 60 to 75 percent range, and, and then he started to up it, and he said in a CNBC interview, it, now, okay, 75, 80, 85 percent, so we're never going to reach it. Hello everyone, I'm David Fiorazzo. Before we go, let's take a little time to fill you in on a few stories we've been following around the office. We start with a fruitful story as mega juice producer Tropicana is set to unveil a cereal you can eat with orange juice instead of milk. That's right, Tropicana Crunch is advertised as the first cereal made for OJ and maybe the last. Uh, Tropicana will be giving away free boxes on their website, TropicanaCrunch.com, starting on National Orange Juice Day, as you know, uh, May 4th. Tropicana Crunch is described as a honey almond cereal with, uh, which balances the tart flavor of the juice, and the box also features a paper sipping straw for taste testers to drink the leftover juice. Studies have found roughly 15 million people in the U.S. have tried putting orange juice in their cereal instead of milk. Where do they get these people? Well, now, this is not the first novel product Tropicana has given away. Last November, they released a limited edition toothpaste. It was created to protect the flavor of orange juice after brushing your teeth by excluding a cleaner called sodium laurel sulfate. Okay, moving on. As most of you know, the richest person in the world, Elon Musk, just offered $44 billion to buy Twitter. Naturally, many conservatives are excited to see if Musk holds true to his word to recreate a free speech platform for everyone. Well, one man was so excited by the announcement that he has offered 100 acres of Texas land for Musk to move the social media headquarters from San Francisco to an area just outside Austin, Texas. Now, Musk already has Tesla and his uh, boring company located in Texas. And Facebook, along with TikTok, are also located in the state. But Texas Governor Greg Abbott even added fuel to the proposal, saying he would declare it a free speech zone and maybe even rename it Twitter Texas. 
Finally, let's wrap things up with our favorite segment, this week's Top Babylon B Headlines. We're going to start with the Twitter theme and ask Dr. Duke and Katie to pick their favorite at the end. Let's start with eccentric billionaire accomplishes more for free speech in one afternoon than Republicans have in decades. Next, Musk's Twitter purchase fails after 138,000 board votes found overnight. Next, white smoke goes up from Twitter headquarters signaling everyone burning documents in preparation for new CEO. How about this one? People who say they aren't censoring anyone, really mad they won't be able to censor anyone. And finally, government that's 30, that's 30 trillion dollars in debt criticizes Elon Musk for how he spends his money. Duke and Katie, your pick. Well, for me, it was the one with the white smoke, because I think that even better, a better title might have been for, been for it. Uh, the, the Elon Musk, the Pope of Twitter, has the white smoke is up. We've got our savior, someone <laughs> coming to the, to the business to actually take it away from the anti-free speech goons who monitor those accounts. Well, I found them all interesting, again, in the fact that so much attention has been paid to Elon Musk, a, you know, just an entrepreneur doing his thing, taking over the world. You can, you can tell how scared the left has been based on their reactions. Uh, but I seriously like the very first one you said about how in one afternoon, Elon Musk did more than Republicans have done in, in decades because fact check true. Yeah, yeah, we've got to move on. It's going to wrap up this segment, but more to come next time. All right, before we say... A farewell. I want to take a moment to show some love to our Patriot Club members, and today that very special little shout out goes to Bob from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Bob, thank you for supporting us. That wraps it up for all of us here at Freedom Project. Stay educated, my friends.